Breaking the fourth wall, especially in a video game that works hard to immerse you, can be tricky. You could just outright pull players back to reality saying, oh, there goes gravity, and so on, but there are cleverer and scarier ways to do it. Let's take a look at 14 meta moments in games that totally scared the hell out of us. Destiny 2, the Ahamkara. The Ahamkara in Destiny's universe are basically wish-granting dragons capable of manipulating reality as they see fit. So when Riven, Marasov's own personal Ahamkara, is taken, a months-long recurring curse that afflicts the Dreaming City is kickstarted. However, the Ahamkara know about more than the game's reality. They're well-versed in ours as well. Usually, the Ahamkara will address someone as O'Bearer Mine, or some such title. But in the lore tab for the Skull of Dire Ahamkara Exotic, the bones of the dragon effectively say, I came to find you. Only you, because you're special. You're from somewhere real. And together, we can burn our way back there. Can we, O Player Mine? Yikes. Banjo-Tooie, Boss Music. In video games, it's pretty much a given that the music changes to match the mood, so if there's an upcoming boss fight, you can expect a more serious or grim tone. Kazooie seems to catch on to this in Banjo-Tooie. After fighting Klongo twice, the duo enter a wide open room with seemingly no one present. At least Banjo believes this. Kazooie reports that there is someone there because the music's changed. Every time that happens, we always end up in a fight. Half-Life 2, Far Distant Eyes. Half-Life 2 has received tons of praise for immersing you into the world and boots of its protagonist, Gordon Freeman. However, not everyone is convinced that Gordon is responsible for all of his actions. One of the Vortigaunt comments that Far distant eyes look out through your something secret steers us both. We shall not name it. Could that something secret also put out Half-Life 3 sometime soon? Thanks. Sunset Overdrive be win. Remember Sunset TV? Of course you remember Sunset TV. Insomniac's weekly YouTube show for Sunset Overdrive hosted by Brandon Winfrey would often provide new details for fans and even be showcased in-game throughout Sunset City. In the second expansion, Dawn of the Rise of the Fallen Machines, the development team thought to have a chuckle by having rogue machines consume Winfrey in-game and turn him into the final boss named Be win Seeing a real-life person effectively corrupted was surreal, to say the least. Then again, this is the game where your avatar effectively rewrote their own ending. WWF Attitude – Triple H's Entrance Far be it from World Wrestling Entertainment, known as the World Wrestling Federation in the old days, to not break kayfabe. In WWF Attitude for the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1, Triple H added a funny little footnote to his classic entrance. Addressing the thousands in attendance, for the millions watching at home, he also called out for that one <laughs> sitting on the couch playing this video game. Super Paper Mario Francis Francis in Super Paper Mario is meant to be a spoof on Neats, but upon capturing Tippy, the interaction quickly turns meta. Upon meeting Princess Peach, Francis reveals that he can't talk to her directly, so he uses his laptop where the player chooses Peach's responses. Hilariously, the princess isn't just being mindlessly controlled. When the conversation turns to marrying Francis and taking it slow is chosen as an option, Peach quickly snaps back saying, who's picking these responses for me anyway? I'm not marrying this dork. Ultimate Spider-Man, Double Jumping. Wouldn't it be weird if Peter Parker just randomly commented on a game mechanic that's been present in numerous platformers for decades? In Ultimate Spider-Man, the player is given a short tutorial on moving around and how to double jump. At the latter tip, Parker responds that Jump and then jump again. Sure, it breaks the laws of physics, but so do most things I do. Which is fair, but how is he aware of the tutorials, we ask? How? Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots Switching Ports Konami's Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots contains tons of callbacks to the previous games. This includes the Beauty and the Beast unit, which consists of bosses fashioned after classic Metal Gear Solid foes. One of them is Screaming Mantis, the leader who, as you'd guess, possesses psychic powers like Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid 1. 
Hilariously enough, this leads to characters like Campbell and Snake talking about strategies to defeat her, like plugging the controller into the second port, which is not possible on the PS3, or destroying a stone bust resembling her, which obviously isn't just out on the battlefield for no reason. Escape from Monkey Island – Dart Play At this point, the Monkey Island series was no stranger to breaking the fourth wall. But in Escape from Monkey Island, it goes a step further and actually breaks the fourth wall. In the scum bar, Guybrush will tell a dart player to hit that guy over there. Which guy over there? Well, the player, of course, which sees a dart thrown at the screen and putting a hole through it. Not quite as elaborate as the LucasArts hint line from Monkey Island 2, but still effective. The Stanley Parable The Museum the Stanley Parable is brilliant in how its narrative seemingly reacts to everything you do. One such instance blurs reality very heavily. If you choose to head down the escape path as opposed to the mind control facility, you'll be thrown into a machine that will crush Stanley to death. This results in a female narrator stepping in and taking you to a museum which contains cut content, beta content, and even some aspects from other endings. You're then informed that only by quitting the game can Stanley be saved, although he can also be left to die, which results in reloading anyway. Undertale – Flowey's Mockery Undertale does a stellar job of remembering your decisions, which is a nice way of saying that you can kill everyone, restart the game, and effectively have a different playthrough where you're reminded of the horrors you've committed. One such incredible instance is when fighting Toriel in the beginning. If you kill her, Flowey will judge you, saying that it's not like you can go back and change fate. But if you try to do that and then spare her, Flowey will subsequently remark that he knows what you did, that you murdered her and then went back because you regretted it. He even outright calls it the power to save before laughing maniacally. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 – Deadpool's Hyper Combo it's perhaps no surprise that Deadpool would make this list. After all, the Merc with the mouth obliterates the fourth wall on a regular basis. Indeed, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, one of his hyper combos involves bashing the opponent with the health bar and then following it up by striking them with the hyper bar. Because Deadpool. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Rosa when you meet the so-called psychic Rosa on the beach in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, you'll receive hints about future events. Rosa even foreshadows the game's conclusion, noting that you shouldn't open the sarcophagus that everyone is after. However, her best moment is regarding whether you'll win, as she notes, whether or not you win the game matters not, it's if you bought it. Which obviously everyone did in 2004, right guys? Uh, guys? Metal Gear Solid 2. It's a game. Of course, we can't forget about Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty and its madness. Amid hints that this is all one big simulation, there's a particular sequence where Raiden has escaped. Colonel Campbell will call and tell you to turn off the game console and that it's a game. It's a game just like usual. Hinting at the simulation, perhaps? But then Rose interjects, stating, you'll ruin your eyes playing so close to the TV. Oy vey. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.